for Sicario, the idea was to be as authentic as possible, to feel that we are very, very close to reality. And with uh, Roger Deakins and Patrice Vermet, my production designer and cinematographer, we aim for that kind of authenticity. We looked at where the actual action takes place with Roger and Denis and the producers. And then we looked around New Mexico, Albuquerque area to see if it was a possible match. For Sicario, we choose to uh, shoot in New Mexico. I need landscapes that will have a relationship with Horizon. I want the characters to uh, be lost and, and emptiness and landscapes that will be almost a character in the film. The border of Mexico and the United States for me, is, it says a lot of things about our world today. This idea that just beside uh, the biggest democracy of the world, a frisbee away, you know, you have this chaos, a place where the laws are not um, uh, followed anymore. Unbelievable. That's what happens when you chop the head off a chicken. Yeah. I need those helicopter shots because I wanted the audience to understand the geography, understand the power of that landscape, understand the geography of the action, and also the absurdity of seeing a landscape that is the same, but is divided just by a line. It's a very uh, powerful image. Alejandro's journey after the tunnel with uh, Silvio. We storyboarded not knowing exactly where things would take place. We were based in Albuquerque, and it was quite a strong monsoonal season that year. So we ended up with all these kind of amazing skies that we hadn't expected. Silvio's police car going into the background, the production manager or somebody said the, there was um, a weather alert and that we had to wrap. Denis had this idea that there was an emotional beat in the film that he wanted to hit. And they found a real thunderstorm to drive into, which is spectacular and completely unpredictable. And that was just a shot we did before everybody wrapped, where with a bolt of lightning going straight down that gives the landscape this character. Roll sound! We're outdoors and with a lot of sunshine. So in this movie, Roger and Denny have created a world where, you know, even in the sunshine, bad things happen. This desert is inspiring, fantastic, and tough, rough on the body. Everybody are tired right now. I'm very tired right now because we spent days on the harsh conditions with the light is very raw. I said to Roger, how can we find a way to embrace it instead of fighting it? The brutality of that sun and bring our characters like Silhouette, this arch sun, and then Roger totally agree and love the idea. You're actually dealing with the real world, a real subject. I try and create a kind of naturalism so you feel you're in the real world in some way, even when it's stylized. I think you really want the audience to connect with it in the sense that yeah, it feels like that is something that could and is happening. I like the idea that we will do a movie with a lot of contrast and this idea of going in the total opposite direction and that the night will be deep dark. Like, you'll need almost a knife to see in the night. We embrace that contrast. The tunnel sequence had a distinct set of challenges to it because it was from dusk to night. As you got into the tunnel more deeply, I think it really became a transition of just light to dark. It was pitch black. Even when we was at the Arroyo, we was in the outside of the tunnels, we were shooting in darkness, and there was one little bit of light just to kind of see stuff. All the cars weren't allowed to have headlights on. Darkness. All this is taking place at night, and all the characters have to work where these image enhancers of one shape or another so they can see. So you can't really shoot it in an objective way with a kind of Hollywood moonlight effect because that doesn't make any sense at all because if you, the audience, can see it, then the characters can see it. So why are they wearing all these silly things? There's an old sequence that is shot in total darkness. But when I say in total darkness, I mean we were shooting in deep dark because we were using a thermal camera and an infrared camera. And those cameras were 
obviously able to see in, in deep night. We couldn't just do it with not standard night vision, that would all look too samey. So then we started experimenting with infrared and found this company, FLIR, who had this really fantastic infrared camera that we could actually follow the footprints down the stairs and stuff, which was great. Um, the prop man actually uh, heated up his boots and walked down in front of us as we did that shot. The night vision did represent different characters, where Kate was, would look at Reggie in her green night vision, and, and Alejandro had the dark uh, infrared vision. Basically, it's like going scuba diving in the desert, you know, and uh, in the total darkness. And that brought a tension that I was looking for uh, in this specific sequence. 